For 100 years, the Chicago District Golf Association has stood for excellence in this extraordinary game of golf. Now the CDGA's magazine comes to life on TV. Chicago District Golfer celebrates the traditions of the past while connecting with the present. It's a golf show that is sure to inform and to have a little fun along the way. For what's important in Chicago golf, it's Chicago District Golfer TV. As we honor our nation's history, we look at the storied tournament history of the CDGA. There's a newly renovated course in Chicago that's full of fireworks. PGA Tour stars discuss the future of the BMW Championship. We'll have plenty of game improvement tips. A number of Champions Tour players share pointers spreading a little sunshine through golf. And we visit an ideal 19th hole that just oozes golf. Hello and welcome to Chicago District Golf for the July edition from the lovely Seven Bridges Golf Course. The CDGA has done so much for Illinois golfers over the years, but perhaps its biggest contribution is its rich tournament history, giving amateur golfers a chance to scratch their competitive itch. I just like to compete. It's fun to get out here and, and play and have something on the line. I think the competition is the definitely the draw. And it's, they're always so well run, every CDGA event. And, you know, you get nervous. I'll be nervous on the first tee shot today, and that's great. I like that a lot. The CDGA has been organizing high caliber amateur tournaments statewide for 100 years, including one of the oldest amateur competitions in the Midwest, the CDGA Amateur Championship. It was first played in 1914 at Ravislow Country Club in Homewood and won by the legendary Chick Evans. It's taken on different forms and was a national invitational tournament for a time in the 40s and 50s before returning to its roots. It's now a grueling test of golf and patience, beginning with 36 holes of stroke play competition and then match play for the final 16. You know, it's a, it's a complete marathon and it's less about ability and more about uh, just mentally staying in every match and never getting down on yourself. And uh, I've had a success doing it. so. It's been a few years. This year's CDGA Amateur Championships played at Hinsdale Golf Club featuring another stacked field. Back in the early days of the championship, one-time Hinsdale member and two-time U.S. Amateur Champion Robert Gardner dominated this tournament, winning on three occasions. In the CDGA Am this week, uh, we've, I think this uh, will be one of the top two fields of the year uh, for the CDGA and uh, you know all the great players come out and you see like Chick Evans won the first event uh, for the C CDJM and we've had a number of great champions. The Illinois State Amateur Championship joined the schedule in 1931 to promote golf throughout the state. Wheaton's TK Kelly will look to defend his title in his hometown at Cantini Golf Club. We're lucky the, the type of tournaments we're able to play in the summer out here in Chicago because like a tournament like this, great field, there's probably 10 Division I college golfers, if not more, and all those 10 Division College I golfers are, you know, good, very good players, and there's a ton of good mid-ams in Illinois, too, so we get a lot of good competition. It's nice for some other states where they're, you know, not able to have the type of competition we are in the summer. Past winners of the event have included familiar professional golfers, such as Gary Hallberg, David Ogren, and Jerry Haas. More recently, currently PGA Tour Pro DA Points won the state amateur three times in the 1990s and fellow tour player Luke Guthrie won in 2009. Bloomington amateur Todd Mitchell is one of only 10 players to win the coveted title two times. I would say that for me, the second one was better than the first one, um, only because I was so new in 2002, I, you know, I hadn't really, that was only my second state am and it kind of validated everything that you know that that I could play a little bit and you know it was that that was more confidence than the first one. Cantini will host the state amateur for the fourth time in its 25-year history. Among those looking to add a second title to his resume is young Quinn Pershall. Well I mean it's a long way to go to become a two-time winner but Cantini it's a great venue and uh, I think it'll be a great test of golf. For more on the tournament history of the Chicago District, including Jordan Fales' 2014 CDGA Amateur Victory, visit cdga.org. 
Up next, we'll talk to some PGA Tour stars about what lies ahead for the BMW Championship in Chicago. And we'll visit a newly renovated course which complements its big brother quite nicely. Many people think you run a business just to make money. No, you run a business because you get to build something. You get to impact the future, to help employees and partners put their kids through school. You get to create value that didn't exist before because that's your name on the building. And it's not just a payroll, it's people's lives. And they're like family. And there's nothing like reporting to yourself. At MB Financial Bank, we know why you work. MB means business. You're a complicated, diverse creature. A fine mix of debonair and adrenaline. Battle scars and good jokes. With an exceptionally smooth taste, only 95 calories and 2.6 carbs, Michelob Ultra is the superior light beer. Perfect for every side of you. Today, we're out at Oak Meadows in Addison. You know, as I talk to golfers, a lot of them have played different sports in their background. And I want to encourage you to tap into your inner athlete. I don't know if you've ever noticed watching a, a baseball game or a football game, the commentator might mention that a player got caught on their heels. What do they mean when they say that? Well, usually they mean that the player wasn't ready to be an athlete and make the play. And quite literally, their weight may have been set up on their heels. As golfers, we can fall victim to that trap as well. In fact, Sometimes when we grab the golf club, it tends to push us back where our weight quite literally gets set up on our heels. If you think of other sports and what makes a good ready position, you can imagine a shortstop, you can imagine a linebacker, they're gonna get in positions where they have their hips out behind them, their weight is not gonna be on their heels, it's gonna be up on the balls of their feet. Even someone who prepares to bump a volleyball or virtually any athletic setup that you can think of. So as golfers, I'm gonna encourage you to make sure that you don't get stuck with your weight on your heels. Here's a great way to test it. When you're set up and in your ready position, make sure that you're able to go ahead and actually wiggle your heels. If you find that you're standing and it's easier to wiggle your toes than your heels, then you also might be stuck on your heels. So tap into your inner athlete, borrow a ready position from other sports you're familiar with, and get your weight up on the balls of your feet for your best balance throughout the golf swing. I'm Ed Stevenson, hit them straight. Thanks, Ed. A new course has just opened in Chicago. Well, it's not exactly a new course. Creative and insightful architect Tom Doak has successfully transformed course one at Medina Country Club. Dave Lockhart has the story. When one enters the gates of Medina, you feel a mystique about the place. It certainly is one of the area's most prestigious clubs and home to renowned course number three. But now course one has received a facelift that truly revitalized the original 1924 layout. Let's go back to the fall of last year when we first visited the site. Well, the hard thing on an old golf course is to try to get away from exactly what's, what's already there and try to see through and see what else you might be able to do. And that's really hard because Everything that's happened on the golf course for 90 years kind of reinforces the plan that's there. The trees have all been planted for that. You know, just everything about the golf course has been about the routing that's in place. This golf course has the nicest trees that I've ever worked with. And we did knock down a lot of trees to do it, but we did it to highlight some of the beautiful trees that are here. Um, you know, you just don't get to build a golf course out of parkland like this a new golf course. That's a style that's almost gone away now uh, because properties with big mature trees like this aren't available. Before it was a tightly tree-lined golf course where you could see the hole you're playing but you couldn't really see much of the other golf course. As I'm sure some of your footage will show when you get some vistas and views now of this golf course that's the main thing is that it's just opened up and it's going to be two totally different experiences when you play number three and when you play number one you're going to feel like you're in two different places in the country. It's going to be really neat. Tom Doak is an artist when it comes to blending a course naturally into the landscape. However, he may be best known for his imagination with challenging greens. 
the contouring will make you think, and like any good golf course, it is key to be below the hole. One of the main things we did here is build a whole new set of greens. And, you know, I think that's a big part of what makes a golf course great. Um, you know, you want to have a lot of variety. You know, we're, we're working in kind of a classic Parkland style, so you don't, you don't get too wild with that. But at the same time, I think there's a lot more variety of the greens. Fast forward to mid-June and Medina is ready to have a party and get course one going after a nearly two year renovation. Check out the sand trap that was unearthed on the first hole in the shape of a camel, which is now the course logo. Architect Tom Doe calmly striped the ceremonial tee shot down the fairway and officially opened up this layout with a bang. It's a very special night for Medina. We have not had three golf courses in over three years with the preparation for the Ryder Cup, the Ryder Cup itself, and then the construction of this course. So it's a long time coming and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal event. Everybody who has seen the course thinks that it's absolutely magnificent. You know, number three is the golf course that beats you up. That, you know, personally, I wouldn't want to get beat up that often, but all my friends would, so, you know, I'd wind up over there a fair amount. You know, this one's gonna be the one that fits in the middle and, you know, kinda touches both extremes. Some of the holes are really different and you, you'll have to approach them in different ways. Or you'll, you'll have to be careful about missing in different spots, depending on where the hole is. And that's the kind of thing that's fun to keep going back out. On. The new design is also part of a water retention plan to help with flooding at Medina and the surrounding community. As we've seen at Medina, big time PGA tournaments have been a part of the Chicago sports landscape for many years. The Western Open was a fixture at first Butler National and then Cog Hill. Once again, here's our Dave Lockhart with the latest on the BMW Championship. In 2013, Conway Farms was a well-received host to the BMW Championship. And recently, it's been announced that the BMW will be returning to the wonderful Tom Fazio design Conway Farms in 2015. The FedEx Cup Playoff Showdown features the top 70 players on the PGA Tour. Chicago's gotta be one of the most incredible cities in the world for golf. Um, Conway, just, Conway being one of, of many great courses there. Uh, I've played a few other around there, but Conway uh, was a cool experience last year for the BMW. Uh, I played pretty well. I, I think I finished 13th or so, 15th. I um, had, had it going a little bit. Um, you know, I didn't think there was a 59 out there, but apparently Jim Furyk did. Uh, it, it's difficult, it's challenging, but it's fair. And uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, there's a whole, whole mix of shots you have to hit off the tee from three iron to driver and work and draws fades and um, you gotta be on your game there. Last year's tournament was an all-star field with Zach Johnson taking home the trophy. It was the first time the tour had trekked up to the North Shore since the 1972 Western Open at Sunset Ridge Country Club. Well, I believe it was a huge success uh, in 13. You know, obviously from a um, you know, spectator standpoint, the, the players really liked it. Uh, they sold a, a bunch of, uh, you know, hospitality. I think they did very well. Even though the event is coming back to Chicagoland next year, there still isn't a permanent stop here. Many players feel that that is certainly an oversight, including Jerry Kelly, a past winner of the Western Open at Cog Hill. I myself think there should be a Western Open in Chicago all the time, or at least traveling around the Midwest. Uh, and when the BMW is not in Chicago, I think we should have a tournament in Chicago. The Western should be there. When the BMW is in Chicago, then I think we should take the Western somewhere else. That's my idea. I've always tried to get the Western Golf Association to do that. I'm pretty sure if there was a, an organization in Chicago that or a, a business that wanted to sponsor a tournament in Chicago and a course that wanted to host it, we'd probably have a tournament there. But I think sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's tough and BMW, I think, probably wants to move it around and, and so that's why where we are. The Western Open has deep roots in our fair city, having started here way back in 1899. And Chicagoans have always supported our sports and our teams through thick and thin. It's such a great sports city. I mean, I was watching the, obviously the Blackhawks, you know, 
the Bulls, the, the Cubs. There's, there's a lot uh, going for Chicago when it comes to sports, so it'd be great to have a golf event there every year. I've certainly enjoyed my time in Chicago, and absolutely, I think it's you know been a long-standing event there, the Western Open and now the BMW Championship. Uh, the crowds have always been so supportive of the PGA coming into town. It's been a lot of fun playing there over the years. Hopefully we'll be back there for many years to come. As a reminder, the 2014 BMW Championship will take place this fall at Cherry Hills Country Club in Colorado. Up next, we'll improve our flexibility at Athletico, plus see all of the good that can come through the game with the Sunshine Through Golf Foundation. Stay with us. Bose Creek Country Club has set the standard for public courses with a private club feel. This exquisite 18 hole championship layout offers the exclusive member four day concept. Pay just one fee and you get unlimited golf with a cart and full use of the bent grass practice facility. Plus there's Porter's Pub, a casual English style restaurant and bar that will complete your day the way you want to play. It's all here at beautiful Bose Creek Country Club in Elgin, Illinois. Hi, this is Jeremy Smith, physical therapist with Athletico. Today we're going to talk about some stretching that you can do pre-round using the cart to help yourself stretch and get ready for the day. First stretch is you're going to prop your heel up, stretch the hamstrings, lean forward in the hips. You should feel that right underneath the thigh. Hold for 15 to 20 seconds, two to three repetitions on each side. This will help increase the flexibility of the hamstrings to help decrease back pain and help increase mobility for the swing. The other thing we need to stretch are the glutes. Okay? One way you can do that is utilize the seat of the cart. Put your knee on the cart and you're going to lean in. You should feel that right through the glute muscle. Get those hips nice and rotary so we can increase mobility and swing, decrease pain, improve overall flexibility with the golf swing. The last one we're going to talk about is the quadriceps, which is the front thigh muscle. Hook your foot up on to the armrest of the cart, and you're gonna lean backwards. Should stretch right through here. Having flexible legs, hips, thighs, is really gonna help improve your overall mobility and decrease back pain possibilities. If you are having back pain or any other types of pain, feel free to stop by your local Athletico for a complimentary injury screen. Be sure and visit one of the many Chicagoland Athleticos to improve your flexibility and overall health. For the second straight year, the Encompass Championships played at North Shore Country Club in Glenview. And for the second straight year, it came down to a dramatic final 12-foot putt to decide the winner. Earlier in the week, we stopped in for the Pro-Am and picked up some helpful advice from these likable legends of the game. Most amateurs I play with never hit enough club. It's always they hit, so I don't know whether they feel like that you know it, it hits and rolls out and that's the length they hit it but you know they always m most of the time they leave it they won't carry the bunker or carry to the front of the green because they don't realize that their seven iron actually comes down 135 yards we actually offer our help when you see someone in a bunker or seeing something that's obviously wrong you say look try this or do this or especially around the greens uh, that's when it really uh, you know, s suffers for the amateur. To get up and down is a real bonus for an amateur. Many of these players have come to our fair city over the years and played a variety of the area's outstanding courses. I've always loved Butler. We played the Western Open there at Butler for, for many years, Cog Hill, and I, I love this golf course. I love Kemper Lakes. I was there last night for the uh, 25th anniversary of Payne's win in 1989. So yeah, I played a lot of golf in Chicago and. Um, I love Bobolink, I love Bobolink. So there's a lot of great golf courses around here. The last round of this Champions Tour event in Glenview was filled with sunshine splashed crowds, and the birdies were plentiful. 
It became a Sunday showdown with three players vying for the title. Six-time Champions Tour winner Michael Allen, three-time winner Kirk Triplett, and 1996 British Open champion Tom Lehman. After Allen nearly holed his approach at 18, he had a simple tap in to tie for the lead at 14 under par. Triplett would have taken the lead on the final hole if he could have made this tricky downhill putt for birdie. I wasn't really trying to watch Tom or Michael or Doug or, you know, I, I could see what was happening on the leaderboard and it just looked like 15 under was going to win the golf tournament. So uh, I had some chances on the back nine, missed a couple but made a couple, played a nice round and hit two really good shots on 18 and uh, yeah, I had a pretty tough putt coming down that hill to keep it online. After Triplett missed his birdie putt, the stage was set for Lehman. He needed this uphill 12-footer for the win. Speed was maybe a little lacking, but but not bad. And you know, it, it just crept up there and dropped in. And you know, it's all it's always nice to make a birdie, but you know, especially when you have to make a birdie, uh, there, there's no no feeling quite like that. Earlier in the week, a few of the Champions Tour players volunteered their time to help out the CDGA's Sunshine Through Golf Foundation. Each player was paired with a special needs athlete, sharing pointers and wisdom. I think it's more about the attitude and enjoying yourself and just enjoying the game as a whole. I, I think that's the most important thing. And maybe a few little tips here and there about uh, hitting the ball or putting or something of that nature, but I think the main emphasis should be just to be able to enjoy the game of golf. Chip Beck has always been a warm and cheerful guy, but on this day, Mr. 59 went beyond the call, actually playing left-handed with the clubs of his partner, Jesse. Right down the middle. <laughs> what made you decide to do that, just to make him feel a little bit more comfortable? Yeah, I think have fun. You know, if you're having fun, generally the children will have fun. That's what I always find, you know. If if uh, you, you show them how to have a good time and what golf really is, it's not necessarily how well I shoot or what score I shoot. You know, it's a matter of, do you enjoy it? Did you hit some good shots? Remember the good ones, you know? And so that's what I try to do, even in my life today. Go get them, guys. See you later. All right. Yeah. yeah. Golf provides so many opportunities for positive experiences and memories. We have one final break to take. When we come back, we'll get a tip from one of the nation's top teachers, and we'll take a trip to a 19th hole where golf is definitely the focus. Stay tuned. Have an exceptional golf experience at Aldine Golf Club in Rockford, where you'll experience a fantastic challenge of golf on this championship course. Aldine Golf Club was voted one of the top 50 courses in the U.S. with Queens fees under $50 and ranked the best municipal course in Illinois by Golf Digest. Play a top-notch course at an affordable price. That's Aldine Golf Club. For the best rates, book your tee time online at aldinegolfclub.com. Are you ready to go? How's the hit? I think you know that we have to take this one plant at a time. It's really the only way that Eunice Feldman knows how to garden. We have got a lot of great bulbs, strong perennials. I am looking forward to a great season and can't wait to get back out onto the field. So thank you and good night. Eunice, Eunice. The big myth is keeping your head absolutely steady. And when you hit a bad shot uh, and it goes to the right, and you hit it thin or you top it, you say, well, I didn't keep my head down on that one. Yes, you did. You did keep your head down. Here's what happens. You lose your spine angle or your posture. It's not your head you're raising. It's your entire body. So let's take a look at this. At a dress we're gonna have a posture that looks something like this. The knees are bent and I'm bent forward. And to add impact, we're gonna have a posture that looks the same. Knees are bent and my head is back and I'm still in that posture. Now this is what causes tops and toe shots. When you come into the ball and you raise out of your posture like this, you're raising up and this causes you to hit it off the toe uh, top the ball and hit it to the right. 
Thanks, Doc. By the way, Jim, Doc Suddy was the 2000 National Teacher of the Year. Well, we've shown you some amazing 19th holes across Chicagoland, but perhaps the 19th hole at Mistwood Golf Club in Romeoville is the most unique we've seen thus far. Chicago's Best 19th Holes is presented by Michelob Ultra. Welcome to the Mistwood Golf Performance Center. The food and drinks are exceptional, but it's the surroundings which take center stage here. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else. It started off as a, uh, a little place to hit golf balls in the winter, and it grew and it grew and it grew. The idea was to make it look like Scotland. And the designers succeeded. The owners traveled as far as Fond du Lac, Wisconsin to hand pick the stone which is sprinkled throughout the recently renovated course as well. But as visually appealing as it is, it's the multifunctionality of the place which sets it apart. The indoor outdoor environment is truly a, a one of a kind experience where you can enjoy food and cocktails 15 feet away from our range tee. You know, hit balls, come back in, have a couple drinks. Um, whether you're waiting for a lesson, just got done with a club fitting and having a celebratory cocktail after that new set of clubs, uh, waiting to have your grips um, redone, or just you know extending the experience after the round, it truly is a perfect place uh, to just wrap up that Mistwood experience. Your friends can, uh, can analyze your swing, criticize your swing. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful setting. The Performance Center features a full-service club fitting and repair facility. You can enjoy the ambiance and the great food while you wait. And the menu matches the outstanding decor and variety and taste. But if you order one thing, get the burger. Uh, Chef Jim Shamitz, the burger, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it seems every time just how juicy it is, it, it's, it's phenomenal. I absolutely enjoy the burger. Every day I'd eat it. For a full golf experience and beyond, the Romeoville course in the Mistwood Golf Performance Center is the place to be in the southwest suburbs. By the way, Mistwood will be hosting the Phil Cozen Illinois Women's Open starting July 28th. Before we go, we want to remind you about the free CDGA app for all smartphones. It includes a complete list of courses throughout the Chicago district with quick links to their websites and phone numbers. Plus, you can post scores and monitor your handicap all at the touch of a finger. Enjoy your independence and go out and play some golf. Oh, wow. Right down the middle. Hey. Let's play it. <laughs> Good luck, Ernie Bates. Let's play two. <laughs> you heard of that, Evan? Yeah. There's a name on it. Yeah. <laughs> you like Jack Nicklaus, man. <laughs> If you're a golfer, then the Chicago District Golf Association has something for you. The CDGA is home to a state-of-the-art golf handicapping service, which allows golfers of all skill levels to compete on a level playing field. The CDGA sponsors and conducts more than 50 championships for amateurs, high and low handicappers, juniors, seniors, men and women. The CDGA is a leader in charitable causes that brings the game to those with special needs. The CDGA is truly for everyone who plays the game. Visit CDGA.org for membership information and more.